My name is Cheyenne Marston. I'm from Motorville First Nation. Um, I was born and raised there uh, 33 years ago in November. And um, my children, both my children, were born and raised there. And um, right now, uh, we're in the middle of a great big water pilot project. Uh, we were one of four communities that were selected uh, to take part in this pilot project. And um, it, the government was trying to come up with innovative ways to uh, better drinking water in First Nations um, within Canada and Ontario. And um, unfortunately, there's not too much innovative um, technology that could be incorporated into, um, into our pilot um, due to us having mostly bored and dug wells. Uh, we do uh, have some drilled wells. The newer houses do have drilled wells. But uh, with the dug and bored wells, we're finding um, anything from contamination from animals to E. coli to, um, um, like Shirley was saying, you know, people throwing stuff down their wells um, when they've gone dry. Um, we've seen a lot of that. Um, also, with the board and dug wells out on our reserve, there are quite a few of them. Um, when newer or when the houses switched over from board and dug wells and drilled a new well, they just typically left the board or, or boarded or dug well where it was. Um, so there's quite a few of them that are laying around uh, Alderville that are covered up. Most of them we have come across and covered up and stuff. But uh, with this pilot project, um, what they uh, were hoping to do is um, they were hoping to uh, pitch some uh, innovative systems. Um, the other three reserves that uh, participated in the pilot, they uh, one chose cisterns for their reserve and uh, the other one chose um, a water plant. Due to the uh, um, the area that we're in, we are so spaced out that um, a plant was just not feasible. That would have meant that possibly maybe not even a quarter of our reserve would have been, would have been supplied by this plant, um, which would have left the other 75% um, with whatever drinking water they had. So with this pilot project, I went out and I collected over 100 and I would say between 125 to 150 water samples from um, various households. We have about 300, 320 houses on our reserve. Um, and like I said, I've collected about 125 to 150 water samples and sent them off to various labs and stuff, um, right down to chemical samples to find out if there's any uh, contaminants in the water. Um, unfortunately, the only thing that we have um, in our water due to the uh, farming fields is E. coli, mostly just in our board and dug wells. Um, we do have about 30 houses that um, are right within um, a walk to Rice Lake. Now they don't draw their water source from the, the lake because um, in the summer time when we have our regatta, unfortunately, um, within the last couple of years, uh, the lake has become very stagnant and very dead. There is no life left in, in our lake at all. Um, so on top of this pilot project, I'm trying to get together another project in the making to try to clean up our lake, um, to try to add some life back into our water, um, to repopulate our fish, also to be able to go down there and swim and drink from the lake again. Um, when I was a little girl, we wouldn't even think twice about running and jumping in the lake and swimming and dunking our heads under or bathing or just anything. And Nowadays, um, last year my son unfortunately fell off the dock and um, it was all he could do to just scramble out of the lake. He was just appalled by the weeds and the algae and the scum. Um, he sank to about where he fell in. It wasn't very deep, but because of the dead organics that are on the bottom of the lake, he sunk to about uh, roughly up to his chest. I literally had to grab him and pull him up before he went under. And like I said, that's typically not what we're used to. We're used to, you know, it being the sand and stuff. And 
So it, unfortunately, it has gotten worse over the years. Um, so like I said, after I tackle this pilot project uh, for the drinking water, my next uh, big project will be to hopefully get a system put into uh, Rice Lake for our little area there. So, and yes, and like uh, Jane had said, I do have another meeting I do have to go to. Um, I'm sorry to have to uh, leave during the presentation, but um, it's been an honor sitting on this committee. It has truly been an honor. Um, I've always been drawn to water, ever since I was a little girl. Um, when I find myself stressed um, or a bad day, I love to the water. I, I can go and sit by a river, go sit by a lake, and just feel at peace and just reconnect. Um, just be able to take that time to just um, sit and think about different things. And, um, come to a, um, a realization that, um, you know, like all the elders have said, that uh, the water is the most important thing that we have right now. And um, no matter what we do, um, it could be as little as uh, just picking up garbage along the shoreline, or just around your own home and stuff, but every little bit helps. And the most important thing are the generations to come, my children, their children, their children's children. Um, it is very important that they have the water to look to in the future um, and that they don't have to fight to um, protect the water or that they don't have to worry about the water going and disappearing and the fact that they would have to pave the water and stuff. Um, I, mentioning that, with this pilot project, it was, um, we, we had been asked by the government what our thoughts are, were on whether we wanted to sell our water to our First Nation community. And um, there's three project team leaders, um, two main, main ones, I, myself, and the third one, only if one of the two main ones couldn't be a part. And immediately I said, no. I said, um, that, I said that just does not make sense. I said, so you guys are gonna fund us money to put in um, systems, point of entry systems on households or even a water plant, but you want us to sell it to our community members and have them pay a monthly fee for their water. And um, we told them immediately that that was not, a, that was not an option, that it, that it just, water is not, it's not meant to be bought. It's not meant, it's meant to be protected. It's meant to, Protect it in whatever way you can, and not for us to have to sell it back to our people, just in order for them to have good, safe drinking water. So my hopes are with this project that once it goes through, um, that all other First Nations will be able to access this money if, if it's a good, like if it's a good idea that the government says, you know, like this, the four communities were a hit, everything was a success. Um, it's a good opportunity for other First Nations to be able to access, if at all possible, <coughs> they can access the money. Um, even just to better some of the wells, um, or even um, to put in a, a plant of some sort, but just so that um, they don't have to worry about turning on their drinking water and having a fear that there is E. coli in there or some other kind of contamination through mercury or metals or anything. Um, it's just very important to me as well as my community um, because every one of those community members I'd asked, even though they had a drilled well and their water results had never come back negative, um, the first words out of their mouth is, I don't drink my tap water. And uh, I go to North Harwood, which is about 15 minutes away from us, and there's a natural spring there where a lot of our community members go to collect their water. Now, unfortunately with that, you have the seniors who can't always get out to the, to the location or they don't have a vehicle and stuff. But um, with this project, my hopes are that, you know, our community members won't say, oh, I don't need to go to Harwood anymore. I can just turn on my tap water and drink the water right from my tap and be satisfied and content with 
And that to me would be just amazing, you know, that our community members would feel safe enough and um, just safe enough to be able to drink the water and trust that their water is good. Um, that is the most important thing. Um, so, you know, like for other communities who are on, um, who are on um, uh, plants and stuff, it, they all know how important it is. Um, but with us, um, like I said, we don't have that option. We're just on uh, wells. And a lot of them are dug and bored wells. And with those, they're just uh, backhoe came in, dug a hole, and you have water. So they're, they are very easily able to be contaminated and stuff. So with this project, it is a good opportunity for our First Nation. And I'm very hopeful that other First Nations um, can benefit from it um, very soon. So I want to say to miigwech for letting me take this opportunity to speak to you. And um, everything that I learned um, last year as well as this weekend, I definitely take back to my people. And I definitely share the stories and the wisdom that I hear from all the elders. Because the elders are the ones who we have to take what they say and we have to listen to it in our hearts because they truly do know what they are talking about. As you can hear from the stories that they tell, their parents were right on certain things, you know, and it's come full circle. And so I'm hoping that, you know, everything can come full circle and everything will work out in the end.